Hello and welcome back to a new travel vlog series. If you are new here, hello, my name is Emily and I make travel and cruise vlogs. And today is a trip announcement and pack with me video. We are heading to the Arctic Circle. In particular, we are heading to Lapland. At the time of filming, we are five days out, so it's time to pack. We are heading to, yeah, so we're heading to Lapland on a three night Transan in search of the Northern Lights organised tour. Very fortunately, if you've seen our Iceland vlogs, we got to see the Northern Lights in Iceland and that was the most amazing experience. So we're really hopeful that we will also get to see them on this Lapland tour. We are actually staying in Swedish Lapland, very close to the border with Finland. We will be flying from Bristol to Finland and then we will be taking a coach transfer to our hotel in Sweden. Finland is currently two hours ahead of the UK and Sweden is only an hour ahead so for all our tours and all our excursions because some people will be staying in Finland and some people will be staying in Sweden we will be on Finnish time so all our excursions all our trips are going to be on a Finnish time so I'm just going to set my clock to Finnish time so that we do not miss anything. We are flying from Bristol Airport on a chartered flight with Enter Air, which are a Polish charter plane service. Um, and we are flying from Bristol to Inontikio, um, which is in Finland. Um, and then from the airport, we will do a transfer to our hotel. The flight time from Bristol to Inonkitio is about three and a half hours. The luggage allowance is 18 kilos in the hold and then you have a five kilo hand luggage allowance. So when we get to the airport in Finland, we will be greeted by a Transan representative and they will then take us on a coach transfer to our hotel. So the travel time from the airport in Finland to our hotel is approximately 60 minutes. So in terms of packing, we have been given a packing list, so very handily. Um, so we booked the trip entirely through my travel counsellor, Deb, who does quite a lot of our travel bookings. So it was booked through travel counsellors, um, but Transun is the operator that run this trip. And around three weeks before our trip, we were sent our tickets that we will need to show at the airport. So we were sent our tickets that we'll need to show at the airport. And we were then also able to log in online and download a really useful guide and sort of travel checklist for the trip. Um, so I've downloaded that and that gave a lot of really useful information on things like what to pack and just general information which I will run through. Um, but things we have, um, so during in the packing list, we get given a thermal suit and thermal boots for the duration of our trip, but there will, it will still be very cold. I looked at the weather for our time on the Thursday anyway, um, and it's a high of minus five and a low of minus 16. So, it's still going to be very, very cold. So lots of thermals, um, which I will go through that I've got in the packing section of the video, but I have bought extra thermals, just everything to keep us warm, basically. In the packing equipment list, it recommends a thermal hat. Now I had general bobble hats, but I didn't have a thermal hat, so I have bought one of those. Um, I bought two, actually. They recommend waterproof gloves they recommend a snood we've got buffs um, which we bought for Iceland if you've seen our Iceland packing video um, we just bought extra for Finland um, thermal socks bought tons for Iceland and thermal socks are the best thing ever I've worn them religiously throughout the winter here and it's the best thing ever I'm not going back to normal socks in the winter. Thermal socks are just the way to go. And so I have, I'll show you in the video, but I have thermal socks and then I have thermal boot socks because I have worn wellies 
pretty much throughout the winter because it's been so wet here in the UK. So thermal socks are an absolute must, even in the UK. It also recommends a balaclava. So we've got two balaclavas. Um, the thermal boots are provided, so we don't need to take them. It recommends thermal tops. So when we went to Iceland, we picked up quite a few thermal tops from Marks and Spencers. Um, they do a really good selection of thermal wear, so I highly recommend them. And their thermal stuff is really nice and also very warm. So I've got thermal vests. I've then got a very thin thermal layer um, and then I have thermal tops and then I'll have a t-shirt on top um, and then I'll have a fleece and then my waterproof coat. They also recommend ski goggles so that will be for the snowmobiling I'm guessing and maybe the dog sledding so we've bought ski goggles they recommend under layers I've already talked about the, the layering process for what we plan on doing. Thermal leggings again bought from M&S and they do really good options so you can have so I've like fleece, I think I've got fleece line leggings, I've got the low thermal leggings and then I've got like the higher thermal leggings. So they do like thermal in different um, levels. And then your, th your thermal suit, which is provided. So that's what you absolutely need for Finland or what they tell us we need. So I have all of that, um, plus everything else that will go into our packing. So we have been sent our travel documents. So we have, I'll need to print them out and take them to the airport. So check-in opens two hours before our flight in Bristol. So our flight is at 10 a.m. on Thursday. So we're going from Thursday the 22nd to Sunday the 25th of February. Um, our flight time is 10 a.m. from Bristol, arriving in Enontikio at 25 past three in the afternoon. Um, as I said, Finland are two hours ahead, so it's about three and a half hour flight. Check-in opens two hours before the flight and closes one hour before the flight. So we will be getting there two hours before, so uh, we will get to the airport, or we plan to get to the airport for about eight o'clock, um, which probably means we'll need to leave about seven-ish just to make sure we're at the airport on time. They've got a Costa in Bristol Airport, so happily we'll stay in Costa if we're a little bit early, but I'd rather be early than late. I'm not sure how Bristol Airport will be at that time of day, at that time, I think so the half term here in Bristol is the week before we go. Um, so the kids should be back in school, but you never know. So better to be early for the flight. When we get to Finland, as I said, we'll do the transfer to our hotel in Sweden. And we are actually staying at the Davi Arctic Star in a twin room, do a hotel and room tour on a separate video when we get there. That hotel has been recently renovated. It is also a cashless hotel, so we don't need to take any cash. Um, everything will be paid for on card. I should also say this trip, everything is pretty much included apart from drinks. So the trip is a package deal. On our trip, the following is included. Full board hotel, or a cabin accommodation, we are staying in a hotel. Return flights with hold luggage. So as I said, we are flying with Enter Air, which is a charter airline. And we have 18 kilos of hold luggage and five kilos of hand luggage per person. Airport transfers in Finland are included. So when we get off the plane in Finland, we will have our airport transfers to our hotel. Loan of our thermal suit and boots so that is included so you don't need to worry about taking your own as we're all aware I am not the smallest of people but I am under the assumption that the snowsuits will fit it says the snowsuits will go up to a 48 inch chest so I will let you know how that goes when I get there next week one of the trips is snowmobiling and you will need a valid driving license to be able to drive them. I've been told by a travel agent who went last week that you don't have to drive the snowmobiles if you don't want to. I would like to try and drive a snowmobile. I think it'll be really interesting and fun. Um, so I will be taking my driving license with me. And there is also a waiver you have to sign um, that's I think just under a thousand euros for if you damage the snowmobile. From what my travel agent said is that providing you follow the instructions, 
and you drive the snowmobile appropriately it's fine but obviously some people will be silly so i will not be one of those people i will be like very very careful because i do not want a thousand euro fee <laughs> but yes so if you are doing any snowmobiling take your driving license you will need it to be able to do it and get travel insurance they also recommend some other things to take that we have also got so they recommend a torch and a head torch so we've got both they also as i said recommend a driving license if you're doing snowmobiling plug adapters so sweden and finland use european plugs so coming from the uk make sure you take your travel adapters one thing we've also purchased for this trip, which somebody recommended to us on our Iceland trip, was um, hand warmers. So we have bought the disposable hand warmers to get try on this trip, but you can also get rechargeable ones. Um, th the ones we've got, I'll show you during the packing, is meant to last about 10 hours, which should be perfect for keeping our hands warm as we go on the trips. With being in such a cold climate, batteries don't last as long. So I need to, I have a battery pack with me. So make sure you take a battery pack, but also for things like the camera, make sure all your trees are charged. And I think you can even get special GoPro camera batteries um, that are designed for cold weather, but definitely make sure your batteries are charged and you have a battery charger. The notes say that towels are included for the duration of your stay, but the hair dry, there is no hair dryer. So if you want to dry your hair, which you will probably want to do, take a hair dryer with you. Transcend do a selection of different trips we are doing the search of the northern lights trip which is a three night trip to lapland tour also includes a northern lights snowmobile safari so where we go on the snowmobiles and search for the northern lights i'm guessing um it also includes a reindeer camp a call of the wild husky safari so we get to do husky sledge sledding sledging sledding we get to do husky sledding um, and a northern lights forest track so there's four excursions included which i think is really really good i'm definitely i'm definitely looking forward to hopefully seeing the northern lights for all the excursions the snowmobiling the huskies the reindeer camp i'm very excited to go and see what's involved and just what life is like in the arctic circle um that's chester kicking me thank you mm. Mm. you see him you see him there he is there um but yeah very excited to go and see what life is like in the arctic so i can go to lapland i've wanted to go to lapland for so long so i'm so excited to be finally getting there on this three night trip i'm going with my mum of course um mum is coming with me i'm just ready for a little break my friend took her son not last christmas the christmas before and he had the most amazing time i will say this is not the lapland in terms of seeing father christmas or santa this is very much sort of an adult lapland in terms of the husky sledding and all that sort of thing so we won't be going to search for santa um but we will be doing the husky ride the snowmobiling the reindeer camp, um, the Northern Lights track. Let's hopefully get to see the Northern Lights. I cannot wait. That's what we're doing. Full board, transfers all included, flights are included, luggage is 18 kilos. I need to remember that because I need to pack now. Um, and that's five kilos less than we had for Iceland. So yeah, I think the tip for me for packing today will be I'm going to be wearing my coat, my boots, that sort of thing to the airport so that it doesn't take up as much space in my suitcase and I'm going to try and be really strict on what I take with me and what whether it's actually a necessity to take whatever. So there we go, that is where we are going, that was a very long winded <laughs> thing of where we were going but that is the trip announcement, we are going to Lapland in five days at the time you were seeing this we would have been we're back from lapland but that will all come so you can expect travel day every day will be vlogged whilst we're out in lapland and then i'll do a room tour as well as then maybe a little tips and post trip review that is where we are going so let's go and pack
but this is what the packing currently looks like. I'll go through everything and talk it all through. Some things I don't have up here because I'm still using them, so my waterproof coat and my boots. So yeah, so let's go through it. So we'll start in sort of winter, so specific to Finland bits, and then we'll just talk general travel bits. So first up, I've got two normal beanie hats. These are from Marks and Spencers, just hats I already had, but they're really good. I thought they'd actually be quite good for layering. So I have got two thermal hats um, that I've ordered from Amazon. They were recommended. So I've got those two thermal hats. If I just need an extra layer, then I've got my normal knit hats on top. I've got normal gloves. My mum's got the fingerless ones, so I will grab them from hers. Um, so I've got normal gloves. I've then got two buffs. So these are sort of the neck um, things that are really useful and keep your neck lovely and warm. So like a snood, um, but yeah, really good for them. I've then got two balaclavas. Again, this is from Amazon. I did an Amazon haul. I'll link everything that I bought. I have got snow goggles, so if I open them up, or skiing goggles I should say, I've got skiing goggles, um, so that's them, lovely, um, so yeah I've got them, I need to give them a clean and take off the film inside, um, but I've got them for snowmobiling. I've got boot socks, so these are from m and and they are so good for keeping your war feet toasty warm in sort of Wellington boots like I wear. So I wear the short wellies, but they're really good at keeping your feet warm. I then have, I have these already, but I bought some extra sets because you know when socks just go missing? Um, so I've got two pairs of m and thermal socks, they're a pack of three. And they're fantastic. I know we're only going for three nights, but you know when sometimes you just want to change your socks, so and they can just be worn again throughout the winter here in the UK. I then have some waterproof gloves, so they are lined, um, and then they're waterproof, so that's really good. So I've got a pair of them. I've then got sort of all my thermal bits, so. These are thermal vests. I've got two thermal vests. Again, I'll probably link everything to M&S just because I think they're really good quality basics. Um, I then have, so a couple of vests. I then have a couple of long sleeve um, thin tops. Um, and then I have a couple of thicker um, long sleeve tops, one navy and one black. Then we have uh, four pairs. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four pairs of thermal leggings. I then have some normal leggings because I thought you can layer them up. So I've got normal leggings there. Um, I've got a couple of pairs of thermal tights just in case I want an extra layer. Um, I've got a pair of pajamas and then I've got a couple of plain normal t-shirts and so that should keep me all hopefully toasty warm along with my thermal suit what else do we have so that's like sort of winter wear and as i said i've got a pair of waterproof boots that i got from m s back in sort of november time they'll be my shoes for the trip um when i'm not in snow boots and then my waterproof which I got from Amazon to go to Iceland. Again, that is brilliant, so I'll take that with me. Other bits and bobs we're taking, so, oh, hand warmer. So these are the hand warmers we've got, so up to 10 hours of heat. Um, so I've got six packs of two, so that should do us the trip. Um, we've got a hair towel, a hair wrap um, to drive my hair. I really rate hair wraps. My backpack and my backpack waterproof cover. My Kipling backpack is fantastic, but it is not waterproof, um, as we discovered in Alaska. Um, so I've just got a waterproof cover that worked really well in Iceland, so we'll take that. Um, I've got my GoPro chest mount. Um, to take that um, and I've got some other GoPro bits so I need to add my tech stuff in 
um, my charging bank, I've got that, um, dirty clothes bag there, headphones, in-ear headphones there, my toothbrush case at the moment, I'm obviously still using my toothbrush so my toothbrush will go in there, um, my airplane pouch so I'll go through that, medicines, so plasters, medication, things like that. We then have a night light, so we take this really mainly for cruising, but it's worked well um, in other places as well. Um, there's no batteries in it at the moment, but I take the batteries in my hand luggage and then pop them in, and it just means there's a little bit of a light. I have sunglasses, so these are polarizing sunglasses, general toiletries, my pouch. This has a sewing kit in, I believe. If I can open it. Yes, yeah, so I've got a sewing kit in there, which is just super useful. Put some public like hair, hair clips and that in there. Um, travel mirror, pop up wash basket. This is so good for cruising or just travel in general. When you don't want to have to keep getting your suitcase out to put clothes away every day so just chuck it in there and then you can chuck it in your case at the end so yeah highly recommend a little pop-up wash basket um i've done my pajamas i then have my makeup so that's the lillian bean travel case I take it always so makeup i've then got some bits that need to go in a pouch so i've got some hairspray and my fly away hair stick reusable cotton pads I've got some socks for the room. I need to put in sort of um, something casual to wear in the room. So just like an old pair of leggings or like jogging bottoms or something. Um, but I've got some socks for wearing in the room. I have my Apple watch charger and phone charger. Um, so that's there. Passport, um, European health card, insurance, all there. And then we've got my card wallet. So as I said, our hotel is cashless, so I'll have my um, Santander credit card that doesn't incur any fees, so that will come with me. I've then got a hedge torch, um, again from Amazon, and a normal torch. And then I've got two um, travel adapters there, and then that is our luggage thing to make sure my suitcases do not weigh too much. So I think that's pretty much it. I need to go through my toiletries and see what I need to put in. Um, so I think we'll do that and then we can start packing. large suitcase. I'm going to take my luggage label off from Iceland. Oh, Chester. Right. Let's go through and see. I'm going to put everything in the case and then we'll organise around the okay. case. I've just chucked everything in so I can organise it and do that um, and then I'll just tick it off my list to say it's in there. almost there which is incredible so makeup and straighteners will go in but otherwise that's pretty much it I'll wear my jacket I'll wear my boots and all my tech stuff will go in my backpack reusable water bottle will go in my backpack so yeah I think we're done I think what I will do is I'm going to do a separate thing of what I put in my backpack um, so in my hand luggage, just so you can see what's in my hand luggage. And I think, I think actually, it hasn't been that bad, has it? I don't think it's been that bad.
think it's been that bad. So I'm going to link all the stuff, um, the thermal stuff, because I really do rate it. Um, link what I've recently bought on Amazon. As I said, they're not affiliate links or anything like that. I get nothing back. Um, but I just think they're really useful to have. Um, but if you've got any questions about anything, just let me know. You can find me on Instagram, what Emily does. Um, the same on YouTube. Um, any questions, just leave a comment or message me on Instagram. I will happily direct you to any site um, or anything that you need help with for packing for Lapland. Whilst I think a pack with me is really useful, I also really enjoy sort of debriefing after a trip as to what was really good and what I could maybe need for next time. Um, hence the previous video to this will be our sort of tips for Iceland. So if you haven't checked that out, go and check that out because if you're going to Iceland, a tips video I think is really useful. Um, but I think that is it. So I'll insert the hand luggage packing now. This is me packing my hand luggage. It is quite late. It is about 11 o'clock the night before we are due to go. And I met my mum and dad because I'm staying here tonight. But I thought I'd show you what I put in my hand luggage for this trip. So first of all, the bag I am using, I was going to use my work backpack, but actually because I want to put basically a set of everything in, I've chosen my Cabin Max huge um, backpack, which is 55 by 40 by 20. So it is the size, the maximum size that you're allowed to take on board. So I've got that. And then we're going to pack all of this into it. So I'll go through what I've got and what I'm putting in and then we'll get it packed. So first up, I've got my card wallet. Um, it's empty at the moment because my cards are in my Mulberry, um, which is what I always wear through the airport. So that will be going in. I'm putting my makeup in my suitcase, which if you've seen previous videos of me, you know I don't usually do, um, but I need to. So I've just got this little clear bag and it's got hand sanitizer in, a lipstick, a sheer lip thing from Tarte, um, face powder and a lip balm. Um, it's a three and a half hour flight so I just thought lip products and hand sanitizer were necessities. I've then got this which has got all my electrics in, it's got my chargers, it's got my SD cards, it's got all my batteries, so that's all in there. As far as I'm aware, I haven't flown through Bristol Airport since October. I don't think Bristol Airport has new fancy scanners, so we'll be having to take everything out. I then have a new um, travel adapter. Which I have so I've got some winter bits so I have basically put a bag of clothes in my hand luggage so in the event god forbid my suitcase goes missing I have got one of everything sort of thermal to keep me warm I've got a thermal hat um, so these bits are just going to go in the front of the bag um, so that they're easily accessible for as soon as we get off the plane um, because it'll I don't want to have too much on, on the plane because it might get a bit hot, um, but have them accessible for as soon as I get off. I've then got a balaclava and a neck buff, a neck buff, so that should be good. I've got a pair of fingerless gloves and my actual gloves, so that's all going in one of the front pouches. I've got my travel mirror, so that will go in, um, just because I prefer to take mirrors in hand luggage. I have my travel adapter. This is such a great, such a great item. Um, there's nothing in it right now because it's currently is charging at my parents' house, um, but it's a three-in-one magnetic charger, so it charges my phone and my watch. I mean, it's USB and it's great. So I take it on all my travels with me because it just saves me having to worry. I do have a multi lead just in case 
for whatever reason. So it's got just the different adapters, so that's always useful to have. I have got my GoPro body harness, so when we are doing the snowmobiling or the huskies, I don't know whether I'll be allowed to hold my GoPro or my mum will be able to hold it. Um, but if not, then I've got a body harness for my GoPro. Water bottle. So Bristol Airport, like most airports, do have water filling facilities. So once we go through um, security, we can refill our bottles. This, I'm taking sunglasses. So these are polarised sunglasses. Probably mentioned them earlier, but they're going in my hand luggage. Um, and then in this pouch, I've just got my GoPro arm with the wrist strap. So that's going. And then, oh, this is such a brilliant product. So I got this from Lily and Bean. So I have, you know, I have the large the jumbo tote but i also have this which is perfect for this will go on top in the um, overhead compartments and then i can just get this out and this will just be with me throughout the whole flight and it has everything i will need for the flight in it so it will have my ipad it will then also have a little pouch which has always take tissues wet wipes a highlighter and a pen yeah tissue wet wipes a highlighter and a pen i have my charger my travel charger we have some sweets so we've got for this trip where there's original butter candies and some Percy pins. And there you go, so that is luggage packed. I might change my, once I've put my last few bits in, um, so my makeup and that on the day, um, I might have changed to a smaller case because I just think it's a bit over the, like there's a lot of extra space. So I do think I might go down to my medium case, which is great really. Um, because there's nothing really else to get because I'll wear my coat, I'll wear my boots, I'll have layers on already on the day. Yeah, I think I'll probably go down to my medium case, which is great. Gives my big case a little break. It started having a squeaky wheel since Alaska, so I'd rather not. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. There we go, guys. That is the pack with me um i've packed my main case and you have seen it now the hand luggage that is the pack with me for lapland so the next video you'll see is the travel day i cannot wait to go and i cannot wait to take you along if you liked this video please like subscribe and follow along on our journey to lapland but i have i cannot wait for all the excursions we're doing the the reindeer camp the husky safari the snowmobiling safari and the northern lights forest trek all of it i just i'm so excited to go so please do follow along like subscribe comment any questions just let me know i will try and answer as many as i can um but yeah i'm so excited for this trip i think iceland back in november was a really good preparation for this trip um, because whilst it wasn't freezing in Iceland, it was sort of five, seven degrees, the wind chill made it a lot colder. So I think that really helped us prepare and know what to expect. It's going to be cold, but I think we're well prepared for it. The snowsuits you get loaned whilst you're there, I think are really great because it saves you having to obviously take them with you. So yeah, so do please follow along, like and subscribe and I will see you all very soon in the travel day.